Hello everyone. We will continue the topic classical report events. And in the previous videos, we started with add selection screen output event. We took the requirement. What is the requirement? Whenever our selection screen or input screen will appear for the first time, this currency field will not be available on the selection screen or input screen. Whenever we will select this checkbox, currency field will be available on the input screen or selection screen. Whenever we will deselect this checkbox, this currency field again will not be available on the selection screen or input screen. Now we are modifying the selection screen. Whenever our selection screen is appearing for the first time, this particular field will not be there. Then based upon this particular checkbox, if we select this checkbox, this field will be visible. If we deselect this checkbox, this particular field will not be in, will not be visible. It means we are modifying the selection screen or input screen. So whenever we are modifying the selection screen or input screen, we will make use of which particular event at selection screen output. What is the purpose of this event? The purpose of this event is to modify the selection screen. Now we will start with the logic part for the same. Before starting with the logic part, we will discuss one of the most, most important concept. Now, what is that concept? SAP provided a predefined structure. What is the name of the structure? The name of the structure is screen screen. If I will show you this structure in SC11 transaction code, I will go to SC11 transaction code. You can choose the third radio button, put the structure screen. It is a SAP structure which has currently how many column? 17 column. These are the various column name, input, output, invisible, active. These all 17 columns are available in this particular structure. Now, what this structure is all about? In this particular structure, whatever we, whatever is available on the screen in this structure, all these things will come one by one. Suppose simple example. I will go for the program. If you see, if this is our selection screen or input screen. So in this particular structure, particular structure, how it will capture all these things one by one. Firstly, it will capture order date, this label order date. Then it will capture this where we are passing the low value of order date. Then it will capture this two, two label. Then it will capture where we are passing the high value of order date. Then it will capture the label payment mode. Then it will capture where we are passing the low value of payment mode. Then it will capture multiple selection button of payment mode. Then it will capture the label currency. Then it will capture the where we are passing the low value of currency. Then multiple selection button of currency. Then this checkbox and then this label currency. So in this particular structure, in this particular structure, all these layout elements will come one by one, one by one. Whenever we will put a loop on this, Whenever we will put a loop on this, 
all these things will come one by one, one by one into this particular loop. Whenever we will put a loop on this. Now the question comes, why, why I'm discussing this particular thing. This screen is capturing all these things one by one. Then how we will write the logic. If this particular checkbox is ticked, we will make this as visible, this as visible, this as visible, and it is coming into which particular thing? Screen. Now, if we are deselecting this, this checkbox, I will make this as invisible, this as in, is invisible, this as invisible. So this is our requirement. Most, most important learning, but this screen is, it is SAP predefined structure, whatever is available on your screen, it will capture all those things one by one. Now, the most important part is this particular screen concept is not dedicated here. It is not, not limited to this particular classical report. In the future, we have module pool topic also where we will design our own layout element. So at that time also, this screen will capture all the layout elements one by one. Now, rather than screen, here we have selection screen or input screen. So this particular screen will capture or each and everything which is available on our selection screen or input screen. And based upon our requirement, we will make this three as visible or invisible because in this screen, each and everything will come one by one. Now, what I will do? I will write the logic. Firstly, initial logic. I will show you in that debugging mode. Then we will proceed with the logic part. Just see. Now what I will do. I will go to back button. As a part of add selection screen output event, I am simply writing loop at screen. And loop. Why I am putting a loop? So that I can show you, yes, how one by one each and everything is coming, which is available on our selection screen or input screen. Most, most important understanding. I will put a breakpoint and show you. Now we all know whenever we, I will run the program, the event at selection screen output will call. Yes, it will call because this event calls every time before displaying the selection screen or input screen. Yes, initialization will also call, but it only call for the first time. But this event calls every time. So as of now, we are concentrating on this. So whenever I will run the program, so my selection screen will not come first. Firstly, this event logic will trigger and I will show you how each and everything is coming into this screen one by one. So for the best understanding, I will just show you, I will just open this selection screen or input screen in one session so that you can relate very easily. I will run in a separate session. Now you can see I'm on add selection screen output. I will show you screen. I'll show you screen one by one. This loop will continue, continue, continue. And each and every layout element, each and everything whatever is available on your selection screen or input screen will come one by one. Now, firstly, I will open this, okay? 
we will ignore this firstly i'm doing f5 this loop is continuing okay chalo suppose i will write screen hyphen name so that we can concentrate fully on the whatever is coming now you can see screen hyphen name is equal to s underscore o date what is the text of s underscore o date so this particular thing is for what this particular order date order date so if i will show you the full screen so firstly we have label order date you can see sap is recognizing the name like this and you can see we have other things also just now in sc11 i showed you we have 17 columns are there suppose just see the various things for this particular thing order date order date have you seen input is equal to 0 just remember just understand a simple concept what do you mean by 0 0 means false 1 means true 0 means false one means true it is a label it is a label so can you give the input value no we cannot give the input value so have you seen input is equal to what zero is this visible to us it is acting as a output yes it is acting as a output so have you seen output is equal to one now active is equal to one is it a active on the screen yes so remember one is true and zero means false okay just wait once i will proceed it will make more more sense now i am doing f5 so whenever i will just continue this loop each and everything will come one by one and i will show you name so that we can concentrate on that name itself i am doing f5 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 now you can see order date low just see is this our order date low yes yes just see the various properties if i'll show you the various properties you can see name is s underscore o date hyphen low have you seen now the input is one because we are able to give the input input is true now you can see is this a output also yes is it a active field on the screen yes it is the active field on the screen now i will go for next f5 i'll just show you screen hyphen name have you seen as of now low is there now we will move on to next have you seen next is what two underscore text this is our two text two text if i will show you the properties of this in this case our input is zero because you cannot give a input this is only only a output and you can see active is equal to one active is equal to one now i will show you from here itself i will do f5 f5 and show you now you can see what is the next one high value what is the next one high value so each and everything is coming here one by one now suppose what is next one next one is payment mode i am doing f5 f5 you can see we have a payment mode we have a text of payment mode now i am doing f5 f5 we will ignore this we'll do f5 now you can see we have a low value of payment mode yes we have a low value of payment mode f5 now you can see we have multiple selection button of payment mode yes now i am doing f5 f5 we have a text of currency we have a text of currency we have a this i will ignore this then we have low value of currency yes we have a low value of currency then we have a multiple selection button of currency yes then we have a check box you can see we have the check box and but the name we gave p underscore c h k now you can see we have the label and what is the label for this display currency 
so have you seen each and everything is coming into this screen one by one so now what we will do but the logic we will write based upon this requirement if this check box is selected we will make this three things as visible if this check box is not selected we will make these three things as invisible and we show in that debugging mode we saw in that debugging mode how how we can write the logic in the next video we will write the logic based upon this complete understanding so what is the summary of the video in this video most most important point we studied one structure sap predefined structure screen which has 17 columns and what are those column main main what is the name what is input what is output what is invisible what is active generally it is a properties properties 17 properties but this screen is whatever is available on your selection screen or input screen this screen will capture each and every layout element one by one and yes it the uh, each and every layout element will come one by one and the main main point is the screen knowledge is not not limited to this topic in the future also whenever you have screen so each and every layout element of that screen will come into this particular screen one by one. In the next video, we will write the logic based upon this full understanding. So that's it in this video. Thank you.